Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julie McNeil Crafts. So today I'm very excited because I am going to be doing a review on these pigment powders from Arteza. I love pigment powders. I have quite a few from quite a few different brands in my stash. So I am looking forward to having a look at these ones and seeing how they compare. The first thing I was really excited about when I opened the box was that it included a little measuring spoon. Unfortunately, from opening the box and me coming to do the review, I think it has been squirreled away, most likely by my daughter, so it's probably in some sort of lol doll set. Um, but I will be going and finding it because honestly I was so excited about that because normally I'm trying to sort of get things with the end of um, a palette knife. The array of colours in this is incredible. I'll put them down like this so you can show you. Um, I was going to sort of swatch out all of them, but I don't even have a palette big enough to get all of these swatched out. So um, I will swatch out some of them. I'm just going to look at the colours. Beyond incredible. Uh, it also says it's cosmetic grade. There's five grams per pot and it costs you just over £40 for this collection. Now I will be making a price comparison with the other brands that I have as well. I'm going to compare these and see how they compare to both the Luscious powders because I have quite a few of those and also um, Lindy's um, Magicals. I do also have brushes, brushes but they don't have a a mica in them they are just a pigment powder now the reason I like my pigment powders is this is the basis to any paint product that you have what people do is they take they take their pigment powders they take various kinds of binders so things are on grams that's one thing that I should point out so you look at this tub and you look at this tub I don't know if the camera's picking up on that and this one almost seems this one doesn't seem to have anything um, in it. It's only about a quarter full and this one is about three quarters full. It's not that there's a mistake with um, your pigment powders. Basically the various powders have different weights so depending on the type of pigment it is, the amount of mica that is in it, the weight of these will be different and because these are measured out in grams that is why so you will get five grams per pot and you will find that that little pot will weigh five grams just as much as the one next to it so that is one thing to learn when buying pigment powders and um, that sometimes there can be a difference in the amount that the pot holds so I'm just gonna I feel like three minutes I'm in and uh, we're still just putting out the colours. So I'm just going to put all of those out just so that you can kind of see the array of colours that we have got. Now I am going to first of all just mix a few and then in water. Um, then we're going to look at a, a number of different techniques and we will see how they compare to various brands. So what I will do is looking at the, this vast array of colours, I am going to pick a yellow, a magenta and something that is fairly close to a cyan because from those three colours you can make loads. So let's just, and I've probably got those colours in other brands as well, and we can build from there. So I am going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Here are my Luscious powders. Um, I have my Magical powders. I know they don't look right, but if you look at the, <laughs> at the top, those are the colours that they will become, and my Arteza. So I've basically just chosen the primaries from each of those. The thing that excites me about the Arteza ones is that it's a reasonable size tub. Um, although I think, yeah, you, pro you get more in these than you do in these, but you do get more per weight in those. But the variety of colours that you can buy, I mean, 40 odd pound for all of those colours that you just saw, that is beyond amazing. Um, and the reason being is, as I said, a pigment powder. Now this is where that wonderful spoon would have been amazing. And that was honestly, I have never had, but I've never bought pigment powders in the past that came with a spoon. So I think that 
is the most amazing addition and I'm sure as you see me use these you will see that spoon come into great effect because I will find it as I said it's most likely in my daughter's um, supply of lol dolls but what I'm going to do here um, because I am going to put these through their paces so that there it will be a bit lengthy so basically what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of powder and I am going to start off and use these as a watercolour so um, I will probably pop you on fast forward as I do this now that's interesting this one had a lid on this one had a um, thing on and those two didn't and I haven't opened them so I'm not quite sure as to why that was right so I'll put that powder So I'm just going to do the same with all of these powders and I'm just going to grab a pipette. In fact, I'll do that now so you see me doing that. And then I will put you on speed up as I mix. Let's get a clean pipette. Um, as I mix um, these. That's not a clean pipette either. Right. Let's just, as I said... I'm going to pop a bit of water in with each of these and turn them into watercolours and then I'm going to swatch them out. But I'll pop you on fast forward. So what we've effectively done there is make a watercolour paint. So I am going to swatch these out as I would with any other watercolour paint. Now these will dry in the pan that I have put them in and I will be able to activate them again at a later point with um, water. So this, as I said, this is one of the first things that you can do. But you can literally, as I said, we're going to have to have lots of... Um, Lots of videos, I think, on how to use your microprators because there's literally so much to show that I wouldn't do it justice in one video. But let's just go over the basics today. Right, so I am now going to create some puddles because I quite like to do that. And I'm going to do the same with all of um, the all of the brands that we've got here. <music> Okay, so this is how the swatches are looking okay. And I would say at the minute they are sort of keeping step by step um, with the luscious pigment powders. Um, clearly all that has happened there is that the Arteza, the, sorry not the Arteza, the um, Magicals are more highly pigmented. So they've got more pigment in than Mica. Whereas both the Arteza and the Luscious clearly have a huge amount of mica in them um, and that gives it the amazing um, sheen but they are playing very similarly um, and so that is good because actually I love my luscious powders so I'm really pleased that Arteza is matching them especially the variety of colours that you can get for such a reasonable price. Okay so now we're going to look at these powders um, but in a less controlled so we're still going to use them with water 
um, but this time we're going to let them do their own things and I am going to do a comparison of black and white. So first of all we just get some powders on. I love this um, use of your pigment powders. It's one of my favourite things to do for creating a background. It takes it, we talk quite a lot about the fear of a blank page, it sort of takes that away, it gives you an instant background really really quickly. Um, you don't know what you're going to get, you can't control it but then it's fun using it and I love using it um, in mixed media projects and just seeing what happens. Um, so I'm just adding some on dry. I am fastening my pots once I have finished um, because obviously I don't want to get water into my pots. Let's just put a bit of those in. kind of goes against my normal principle of not wanting to put all three primary colours down at the same time because I don't want mud but um, we're just doing this to test. So um, we're getting a beautiful soft sheen at the minute you're not going to be able to see that because it's the sort of thing that would look much better once it is dry so we will just do that you can maybe see a bit more on the black there okay so what I'm going to do is put you on speed up as I cover the other doing the same technique but So that is the um, um, card dry now. So as you can see, this is the difference between a pigment and a mica. And the Arteza are talking, they are describe themselves as mica powder. So we would expect the mica content to be higher than the pigment powder. So you can see that on with the Magicals that are more of a pigment, they've got a really bright colour here, but we're barely seeing anything on the black. And that is to be expected. Um, with the... Um, micas, it's the other way around, so we're barely seeing anything on the white, so I'm just going to do the comparison of the black here. We have the Arteza here and we have the Luscious, because I think they're probably the closest comparison. And as you can see, side by side, they are pretty much, um, you know, going, do you know what I mean? They're pretty much neck and neck. Um, so the difference really is just as to where the um, powders have lay and moved and things like that. So. Um, so far I am absolutely thrilled um, with how these micas are playing. So honestly there are so many things to do with mica powders. I'm just um, going to be covering the very so For this test I'm actually going to take the magicals out of the mix because um, I thought the magicals were quite highly mica'd but in the tests that I'm doing they're really not. They're much more pigmented so I don't think that's a fair comparison. Um, and yeah, we've already looked at the difference between a pigment and a mica. So I'm just going to um, do this test between the Luscious powders and the Arteza powders because they, as I said, they at the minute seem to be a neck and neck. Um, price wise, they're fairly similar as well. Um, so um, I think I like the Arteza in that you can get a lot of colours quickly. These are like quite big pots, so um, they're probably similar value, but it maybe just takes a while to build up your collection. <laughs> um, whereas this, like, you get so many colours all at once that it, to me, I would go for that because I'm a magpie when it comes to colours. So I'm going to start off um, with my Arteza first. So this here I have got, this is a fun technique as well. Um, this here I have got um, my Versamark powder and I am just going to dip a dry soft brush into the powder Oops, and then we just drag that along and we get a really fun um, pearlized effect. I'm just going to clear up my brush because I'm actually going to move into the between the colours um, with this technique here so I'm going to dip that in Oops, spilling everywhere and let's blend the 
pink and yellow together and you'll see like where they cross over we're getting that sort of nice corally colour so as I said the colours that you've got in that Arteza palette and um, we could have a lot a lot of fun with this technique you know that like a massive background stamp we could call it, have lots of fun so I'm just going to again so you need a nice dry soft brush for this and again I'm just going to put a little bit just on the tips I'm just not getting quite in there, there we go and let's move that there like that so I'm just going to dust that off um, I'm going to get another brush that's not um, had anything on it I'm just going to let's just brush that away like so and there we can see look how good that looks so let's just um, I'll just do the same now with um, the luscious and again it means we can have that sort of side by side comparison so there's the yellow going on there now the other thing to point out is um, I might not have colour matched the colours of these as um, closely as possible this particular technique is slightly easier with the luscious powders and the, the, the neck of the bottle is a bit wider so I'm finding it easier to get the brush in but with regards to the effects that's fine but then of course you can like decant um, your powders and if you were to use that little spoon that came with it um, you wouldn't have that problem at all so let's have a little look at this I'll brush it away so again I think the I think actually the Arteza the gold there is slightly richer um, than the um, luscious one so again I'm just going to grab my pen so that we can just have a little look at those side by side so we've got our teaser and then we've got luscious okay the last two things I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some with some gesso um, to have a look at the chalk paint effect and I'm also just going to mix some with a gel medium to see how it plays like that and I think that'll be my review for just now and then I'm going to have to create a series of you know what to do with pigment uh, makeup okay, powders. So I'm going to go back into my Jean Davenport journal for this. What I'm going to do is just grab two blobs of gesso like so okay and um, then I am going to just wipe my palette knife Oops. And then I am just going to grab some of the um, Arteza. So let's just, we'll do the Arteza one first and then we'll do some luscious. So I'm just going to, this is where the spoon would have been invaluable. It will be in amongst my daughter's toy sets. She'll have found it and commandeered it. So I'm just going to put that in. Now, with this being um, gesso, it is chalk based um, so we are going to lose a little bit of the sheen when we do this it's not going to be as highly mica and shiny because that gesso is um, going to sort of take that away but this is where we are going to create like a chalk paint effect this is what I love about powders you can I'm constantly going on about it but it's like you don't need to have masses and masses you know you get all these products you get like um chalk paint so you get chalk paint and then you have you want to buy it in all the different colors and i do because as i just said i'm a bit of a magpie when it comes to these things um but if you've got things like powders you don't need it you just need like the actual fundamentals just in for the sake of knowing that my i'm not going to mix my mica powders just taking that off there so that's the Arteza one there and that's coloured up really and nicely so I'm now just going to grab some of the luscious and I am just going to again put some of the powder in there and mix that up into the gesso to create this lovely chalk paint so yeah I'm a huge believer especially if you're starting out and you're on a budget and you see all these pretty uh, products and it's like oh I would like to have all of those um, genuinely I feel buy yourself a good gesso buy yourself a good gel medium um, and some mica or pigment powders and you're good to go so those both work really well so again I am going to grab my pen so we've got 
uh, Tisa Mica, and we have that um, with gesso. And then we have um, luscious powders, um, all with gesso. Okay, so for this next bit, I am going to just let's. Okay, um, so this. this time I'm going to do something similar. I've got a um, super thick slap on. It's um, one of my favourite gel mediums. It does dry clear. So at this present moment in time, as I'm putting this down, we are not going to get the truest colour. But what I will do is come back to this um, once it's dry, and we will take a look at how it has performed um, then. Just wipe this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab um, two colours of the mica. So again I am going with um, the Arteza. I'm going with this lovely pink that we have and I'm going to pop that into that one. Let's mix that up. I love doing this. So again as you're doing this this isn't going to look completely true to colour because at the minute that white colour is sort of knocking it back and um, making it look far creamier. Um, than it will look once it's dry. Once this is dry it's going to look the true colour that it is in the pot. Um, it's just the nature of the product of the gel. Um, that would happen with most brands. Now I like to have two colours when I'm doing this technique and pop it through a stencil. So I am just going to do that now. Trying to knock it off so I'm not using too much. And let's put that put that in there. Oops. It's so light. <laughs> so light it's going everywhere. Okay. That's good. I'm just going to um, brush that off my page a little bit just um, so that we get the comparison fairly true. So I am just going to grab a stencil here and what I quite like to do is let's get two colours. So different parts of us. I've got both colours on my palette knife at the same time and I am just going to sort of almost blend blend those colours together. Okay, let's just use all the yumminess that we've got here and I think this is quite a fun technique and this is where your mica powders really come in um, because you can do this and because you're just mixing it up on your palette you're not worried about contaminating a whole tub of a colour that you like. So, okay, and then we will lift. Oh, look at that, those colours look quite impressive. Okay, so I am now, uh, I'm just going to clean this and we'll do exactly the same with the luscious. Okay, so let's do the same again. Let's grab a little bit of our, luscious, our uh, gel medium and I'm going to do two blobs of that. Okay, and this time we are going to get our luscious powders out. So, I will finish my review tomorrow once this is dried, but I have to say so far I am loving the Arteza powders. Um, up until now, um, Luscious has been my brand of choice with regards to mica powders. Um, they are a favoured brand, one that I think of quite fondly. Um, yeah, if I was to go and buy mica powders, it's been theirs. Once I tried theirs, it's always been theirs that I've gone for. So for me, for another brand to match that quality so that I'm happy, probably takes quite a lot because, you know, I tend to, <laughs> once I find something I like, I tend to stick to it. Um, so yeah, for another brand to come in and for me to go, actually, actually, they're pretty good. That's, yeah. It's like my um, alcohol colouring pens of choice. I've tried lots of different ones, but I just like the ones I use. <laughs> and nothing's moved me from that. So when I find something I like, I tend to stick with it. Um, but yes, I can see me using these um, these powders a lot. And I'm actually looking forward, like the minute I'm just doing sort of a general play, um, but I'm actually looking forward to using them you know, in situ, in a craft project and seeing how it um, plays um, together. So that's me 
So we can see from this that, that obviously the colour tone of the reds that I've put together, the choices have been slightly different. And probably have one that's just the right colour in that massive tray of colours in the Arteza ones. But there we go. It gives us an idea of how they play with their various um, products. So again, I'm just going to write there. So now we've got um, Luscious. Oh, the gel medium. Okay, so we will come back to that tomorrow. Um, and see how that has dried okay so this is the gel medium now you can see how bright that color is now that it has dried and again i think it has matched the luscious powders quite well and actually taking a closer look the luscious powders i've got an ever so slight green to them when um, in there and I don't have that same sort of grainy effect um, in that but these are also a cosmetic grade mica so it's really really fine so that's sort of really added to the smoothness of that that is so smooth whereas this is just ever so slightly grainy not much so I'm not knocking this product but ever so slightly grainy but that is just perfectly smooth so overall that's as I said that so as a review that's the gel medium We've got it there with gesso, that's it swatched out. Um, okay, they're not as bright, but we're just saying they're going head to head with the Luscious. Um, this is it on black card, and that is it um, stamping and with Versamark and dusting over. So overall, absolutely, absolutely in love with this product. Cannot wait to just sort of play properly in my crafting. This is just sort of like a swatching out, becoming familiar with it, but looking forward to use it um, these products in a crafting project and as I say we've barely touched the surface of things that you can do with mica so it is something that I will be um, sort of following on the channel so um, love 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 so I will have if you had your interest piqued by this product after my review the details are all in the description box below they are affiliate links um, I also have a discount code running until the 22nd of May 2020. That will be in the box below as well if you're interested in getting these goodness. If you have enjoyed it here and are interested in, <laughs> in my thoughts on these products and watching lots of crafty tutorials, please do consider liking and subscribing and I'll be back again very soon. Okay, take care then and goodbye.